Good morning, everyone. This is Anka Metcalf with TradeOutloud.com. Welcome to uh, the Futures Outlook for the week of September 9th. It is 9.32 a.m. Eastern. And let's begin with the e mini Dow Industrial Average. All right, so the monthly chart, uh, we've had a very short week. Uh, and we're currently trading within the prior month's range. So right now, price ended on Friday at 25,945. Let's see how the weekly is shaping up. Weekly chart, we're still trading within the prior week's parameters. So last week, we had a pretty much inside week. If we trade above 26,195, I see the price projection higher, trying to challenge the prior high that was established all the way in January, end of January, January 29th at 26,684. So we will be looking for a continuation pattern to the upside. As long as we're trading within this range, trading may become choppy. And obviously for day trading purposes, we will look for buying the bottom and selling at the top or continuation higher holding for the possible break over 195. If we happen to break below the low, 25,789. Now keep in mind that we have a lot of support in this level from this prior week high that was on February 26th. And this is currently creating minor support at this level of 790. But if we break the 790 zone, we still have a little bit of room for a correction lower all the way to the 25,550. 25,550 will represent a confluence zone from this 10 exponential moving average and also from this prior resistance area from the right hand side, and that is from March 12. And this is where we can expect a little bit of follow through to the downside. From the daily perspective, from the daily perspective, we've had a series of dojis. One, two, three, actually four, five dojis. Uh, and uh, so far we have tried really strongly to hold this uh, 820 zone. And this has been the line in the sand for a very long time, for in fact, the whole entire last week. This week, if we break above 26.035, we may still see a little bit of run up all the way into the 26,090 back again and continuation into 26,175. The hourly chart looks a little bit crowded. So to start the week off, I'm not going to be doing anything really early on Sunday, but I will be waiting for the price to digest more and trade above this whole entire range of 26,050, even trying to advance a little bit more towards the 26,100. We'll see how the overnight uh, overnight price action will digest this area and if it will digest it. For day trading purposes, we are still residing below the 200 moving average that is keeping a lid on price at this price level of 26,020. And any reversal off of this entire cluster zone may project a higher price into these highs of 26,090, 26. 100 and possible runner up into the 26,150 and higher. Let's continue with the e mini SP. And of course, we're going to be starting with the monthly chart. Monthly chart is a little bit red as of right now. So we came in a little bit, tested this minor support level from uh, the beginning of the month. And uh, also we can see that we have an inside trading um, uh, pattern here. So we haven't escaped and we haven't made a new high compared to the prior month's high, the month of August. The month of August we ended up uh, with uh, a price of 29.17.5. Right now we're trading still within that range, but we're trading in the upper 50% of that bar. So that makes it still bullish on the week. Obviously, we're trading into a mega, mega trend higher. All right, so the weekly chart still looks very bullish. We actually traded uh, the month of August, dissolved this prior high from January, uh, from, from the end of January, January 29th. We had a little run up into the 29.17.5 and last week we broke below prior week's low. So we're looking a little bit more bearish 
from the weekly perspective. So we look like we really want to pull in a little bit further, possibly into the 28, uh, 2850 zone. All right. So these are just some some pullbacks that are happening on the weekly level. Daily chart. Um, daily chart, we're running into a, a really sustainable support zone. We have support from the 20 moving average, simple moving average. We have support from minor, uh, from we have currently minor support deriving from this prior resistance zone. And we also have dissolved this prior high right here. So if we don't see any reversal happen at this point, and this is pretty much, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see the pattern. So. Uh, as long as the price is going to be maintained in into this uh, uh, moving average web, the 20 simple moving average and the 10 exponential moving average, things are going to become a little bit more choppy. Um, currently, the hourly chart, and we're going to move to the hourly chart in just a few seconds. Uh, currently, the hourly chart has a lot of support. We've been trying to bottom out at the 2864 zone. And any reversal off of this area that will break the 2880 zone uh, may project the price back higher. Hourly chart, and this is what we're focusing on for our day trades. Uh, hourly chart is really uh, trying to establish support level. This is the support level that was established on Thursday at 2868 zone. We pierced through this level, sliced briefly into the support level, but still into the zone rallied hard into uh, the first um, hour, in first two hours uh, into the trading session and then everything fizzled out. We came back into the support level right here and you can see that mildly we have established a higher low right here at the 2867 zone. Rotating back a little bit higher but yet never challenging towards the end of the day. We never challenged this, these prior highs into the 2880. So I'm going to be looking for the 2880 to 2885. A break obviously of 2885 will uh, create more dynamic buying pressure uh, and uh, probably more traders are going to be lining up for a possible buy into this uh, into this area. Uh, I do see, and as long as we maintain these patterns here, although we're trading below the 50 uh, simple moving average, although we're trading below the 20 simple moving average, I still think that this is mildly bullish for a possible uh, buying of these lows and offering at the highs. We're really establishing, we're really, really trying to establish a bottom right here. The confirmation is going to come only over 80 and 85, and that's going to be the cushion zone that is going to project the price higher, not a lot, but back into the 90s and 92s. Obviously, the 200 SMA looks pretty flat at this point, the 2897. This is going to be that big line of the sand and the confirmation that, yeah, the price is ready to come back to the higher levels above the 2900. All right. Let's move on to NASDAQ, and uh, we're going to move again to the monthly chart. Monthly chart still, price action. This is the first week of September, also short week, uh, and uh, short trading week for the U.S., that is. So we're still trading in the upper 50% of August. On August, we've uh, had a new high of 76.97, and right now price retracing to 74 uh, 7434. So we're still holding on very, very strongly from the monthly perspective. Um, from the weekly perspective, we're tapping onto the 10 exponential moving average and also the price is trading within this whole entire median cluster at the 7400. 7400 has been the line in the sand. Uh, for the last two trading sessions on Thursday and Friday, and these were the levels from which we have bounced. All right, daily chart, you could see it right here, tapping right into the 50 uh, simple moving average, and you could see the median line right here, and we have been coiling around this area for your, for quite some time, and this is uh, beginning, uh, uh, beginning with uh, July, and 7,400 has been that line in sand for quite some time. So July, August, and now we're back into it, tapping into the same number for the, in, in the beginning of September. All right, let's move on to the early chart for some immediate price action. 
Uh, again, 7,400 was that line and stand from which uh, from which we've had the bounce on Thursday from the same specific zone. We had uh, we pretty much had a base uh, tapped into the prior support level right here early eight o'clock, uh, and this is ahead of the NF, uh, NFP numbers. Uh, <clears throat> then we took the price back up, same reaction, very, very strong reaction off the 7,400, uh, tapping into resistance right here. Now, this resistance doesn't come only from this uh, reversal at the 50 simple moving average, but from the left-hand side, you could see that we had a solid cluster, solid support, solid box here, solid base. And the price got rejected at the 7,500. You can see it right here in the vicinity of 7,500. We got that rotation that took the price back into the bottom of this range right here that was established in the overnight trading session into the 25 zone, 74, 25 zone. Now, we're gonna have to see how this plays out. What I typically like to watch as I'm trading uh, and when I see these uh, uh, t t kind of cluster develop, I always zoom out a little bit to the four hour chart and try to identify a better pattern uh, and a better bottom, a pivoting bottom where uh, I could identify possibly some, uh, some short term swing trades for the upcoming week or even if it develops throughout the week. All right, so right now we're still dealing with this cluster. You can see it right here, 7470 is again the resistance zone we had that flurry to the upside back into the uh, vicinity of the 7500 so pretty sideways price action and i think that uh first off we need to toss the 7470 i'm not going to do anything aggressive right here but 7470 needs to be tested and if the price should manage to trade above 7470 then it has some uh uh possibly some more buyers lined up at the 70 zone that may push the price back to a 75. It's not going to be an easy trade, but this is something that I'm, uh, that I have on my watch and the key levels that I'm watching are 74, 70, 7,500, 75, 75, 50. And then again, we still have this uh, flat 200 moving average at 7,600. So, um, it's not gonna be an easy, very easy, comfortable trade. Um, the reversal that is gonna come in at 74.90, which is pretty close to this uh, 200 moving average, that's gonna be the really nice pivoting zone confirmation that the price is ready to continue higher. In fact, you could see this from the daily chart right here. Super, super, uh, uh, super clean and clear patterns. Just gonna take this so you could see what I'm looking at, this is resistance right here. So this is what we need to break. This is resistance, cre uh, this is resistance, obviously creating resistance at 7,500. We also have a confluence zone right here. And we have this pretty pattern here that is pinning right into the 7,400. And I know it's just about 100 points here, but this is gonna be the really easy trades. So the really easy day trades, any of the swing trades are gonna come over uh, well, swing trades are here at the bottom, like we've talked about in the trading room. Um, but confirmation for day trading 75, that's going to create that push that is going to uh, that is going to really create that price velocity that is going to take the price back to the 77, 76, 7700. All right. So uh, NASDAQ needs a little bit more proof in, in that respect. All right. Let's move on to Russell and Russell. Let's move on to the monthly Russell. Uh, well, Russell just made a new high this past week uh, and uh, 1746.3. Uh, and the, uh, oops, let's see, we skipped one. Let's go to the weekly charts. Weekly chart has triggered a sell uh, and the sell has landed back into this cluster to the left-hand side. This is resistance. Now support for a current price action. We're also very, very close to tapping onto this 10 exponential moving average at 1700. And that's also a confluence zone right here. So any reversal that may come in off of these levels may push the price a little bit higher. Daily chart, this is what I'm gonna be watching. Doji, uh, 1724 is going to be the trigger for higher uh, as long as this support level at 1705 is going to hold. 
pretty pattern right here. So this is minor support at 1715. So we're standing on that minor support zone right here and we're trying to reverse to the upside. We'll see what Sunday brings, Sunday open brings, and we'll see the overnight training session obviously on Monday. And we're going to follow through with a full analysis on Monday into the trading room, a more specific for our day trading purpose and also for swing trading purpose. One hour, let's go to the one hour. And like I said, remember that median line that is at 1715. This is it right here. And this is actually that support level. So the more we coil around the 1715 level, we may see upper prices into the seven back into the 17 20 17 30 zone but remember the big blast is going to come over 17 24 that's going to be the trigger uh and those are going to be the easier trades to the upside pullback buys no exception shorting will not be an option in that case especially for day trades so any pullback buy minor time frames that's a go all right let's uh move on to gold this is not something that I really like talking about because there is a bunch of uh, noise coming in gold. And don't forget, gold is highly, highly an emotional commodity. So gold right now from the monthly chart still trading 50% within the prior month. So not a lot of uh, uh, price confirmation here. Uh, based on the monthly chart, I need to see a trigger of 17, uh, of, I'm sorry, of 1234.5 at least for a reversal back to the upside of uh, the weekly chart. Again, weekly chart is very, very messy. Uh, perhaps a test of 1225.6, that may uh, actually have maybe a push of the price a little bit higher. I don't see really huge targets. Uh, 1220 uh, for a first target and then possibly 1234 1234 maybe that week that monthly trigger that may push the price a little bit higher from the daily chart daily chart very emotional and uh, I would say a little bit crowded here um, and uh, the hourly chart I mean the hourly chart is just, I'm, this is not something that I trade uh, but uh, again, these are the clusters that we spoke about, the uh, 12, 12 and change zone. We definitely need to break above this area in order to really have a cleaner trade. Other than that, it's going to have like a lot of hiccups and a lot of turbulence. So in my opinion, gold is not ready to do anything right now. We definitely need to see some positive signs. Uh, and those key levels that I mentioned, these are the levels that I'm going to be looking for. So I'm not going to be wasting my money and my time on that chart pattern. All right, let's move on to oil. And we're going to start with the monthly chart. Really nice consolidation at the 67 zone right here. And you can see that we tapped into this prior pivot, prior pivot high, which established new minor support for current price action at 63, where we had the reversal. The price came back up, but oopsie, we ran into this resistance from from this low from these lows at $75 right remember this range right here 2011 all the way through to 2015 so really really heavy cluster here this is where the price kind of um, you know was that barrier that minor resistance at $75 if we manage to break through this area we can actually have a little bit of a push to the upside but hey let's take a look and current support level 64 67 we actually triggered a buy reversal at seventy dollars and fifty cents we still have a lot of room to continue higher into the 74 okay 74 74 50 and back into these highs of, of 75. so as long as the price is still holding into this area of 67 we can still have uh we could still look uh, oil still looks positive for a push to the upside new parameters for this week uh, we're going to be looking for 66.80 to hold and a reversal over $71 may have the push all the way into the $75, $75 weekly. Weekly is a little bit choppy. As you can see, a pretty wide range for last week with a new support level developed at 66.80 and new resistance developed at 71, 71.50. Now, things are going to get a little bit more complicated because if the price is going to reside in the lower half and the lower 25 percent of the prior weekly bar then we're going to possibly see a retest of 65 dollars so um let's go on to the daily chart 
and see how we're uh, shaping up here on the daily chart. We have a pretty nice pin here at the $67. Remember, we talked about the 67 as being the, the area of minor support. And we have a pretty nice doji kind of pin-ish style trying to root into the $67. Now, if we get a break over 68.10, 68.11, we may have another push higher. It's going to be turbulent, but it may have a run into the $69. And the next target, $70 and uh, $71. It's going to run like in $1 increments here. So that's the way uh, the resistance zones are uh, created are actually pointing out right now all right and to continue with just some updates and some of the swing trades that we have been in uh, feeder cattle uh, this is the trade that we have been in since uh, February it's uh, more of a quarter trade than anything else I'm gonna point out to the weekly chart weekly chart had a really nice pullback and reversal we're going to look again. So one of our first target was one of our last targets. I'm sorry, was 155. It achieved that target, but I still have one lot left and I'm looking for higher targets back into the 159. So 159 and 160. So I'm still looking for another run up. Uh, we're going to be reducing uh, our stop for this specific trade uh, for the last lot below the 145 zone. By popular demand, bonds. Okay, let's take a quick look at bonds. Weekly chart pointing to the downside. I uh, And in fact, this is something that we've talked about into the trading room. We've had pretty much this year, pretty much this year, so since since uh, February, so February 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight, for eight months, we have been stabilizing and coiling around the 143, just a tad above and a tad below this is something that i don't like to trade specifically uh i think that uh we may still see lower prices here this is a very weak uh very very weak uh, uh base that is developing into a minor resistance zone at the 146 level 146 level was never breached to the upside 146 13 zone uh that i'm referring to so this Pivot uh, pivot low here from 2017 really set this uh, really set uh, uh, the stage for this bearish uh, base. Any break below 141, uh, any base actually 142, but 141.23 would be more of a confirmation to the downside, uh, and we could see way lower prices back into the one, uh, 130 uh, 133 uh, area. Uh, weekly chart, uh, as you can see, it's just coiling around that 143 number that I've mentioned uh, when we looked at the um, monthly chart. So we're still trading lower. Again, this is support, but again, this is not a very solid support zone right here. We're getting a lot of selling pressure from these uh, descending, uh, descending tops. Uh, and uh, if we break this uh, 142 zone, we can still see lower prices, like I said, way, way lower prices. Uh, back into the 139, at least. 140 would be the first test. 140 would be the first test, and then we will see prices of 139. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's take a quick look uh, at copper. And we're also going to start with uh, the weekly chart. Uh, copper right here is still dealing with this uh, past cluster that we had. So you could see that the price is still meandering within the same parameters. Uh, we have resistance at 280 and we pretty much have support into the 250 zone. And that's going to be pretty much the line in the sand. And this is the support level from which copper bounced a little bit to the upside. So right now, uh, uh, copper is trading on the 200 simple moving average onto the weekly chart. Still looking a little bit more bearish, and I think that it still may want to come into the 250 zone. Let's see how uh, the uh, monthly chart is set up a little bit here. Well, okay, you know, um, I'm looking at the 268 zone. So I'm going to set up quick alert for the 268 zone. And this is, again, this is going to be more of a swing slash core trade. I'm going to let this up just click create all right 
So this is going to be my trigger for a reversal to the upside. And now let's look at the weekly chart and see how we stand. Yeah, this is what I'm going to be looking for, for a projection to the upside. And again, things are not going to be easy in target wise, target wise. I'm going to be looking also for a target into uh, 275. Uh, also going to be looking for a target into the 280. Uh, that's pretty much going to be our on one R right here trade. So it, it's not going to be that great in terms of risk to reward, but we'll see how we could get that started. Daily chart, uh, still into a cluster. We're still trading uh, into pretty chaotic fashion here. So let's go back to the weekly. Yeah, it, it's all it's all going to be up to the weekly chart. And if we get that price over 260, 269 to 70, then we may get a little bit of push higher, but it's not, it's pretty much an, um, it's going to be an asymmetric trade, at least into a, into a target one plus target one plus R. So it's not going to be an easy trade. Um, we'll see how next week is going to uh, develop natural gas. I know I had a lot of members in our uh, trading room ask about natural gas. Let's take a look at the weekly. The weekly chart, uh, we have the pin here. We've talked about a $3 reversal back into uh, the support level, into the well, two, 280 was the support level. We breached that level. And uh, let's take a look at the monthly chart. Monthly chart still sandwiching. And if we break, monthly chart is actually a little bit clearer. Uh, if we break below 273, then we can come back down into the 250. Okay, 250 is going to be seen as that line in the la line in the sand. I'm, I'm going to possibly be a buyer at the 250 zone. So I'm going to set a quick alert here because I accidentally kind of erased all my alerts. All right, so I'm going to put this below. Okay. Um, and I see this as a buy zone. Um, if we obviously if we break and if we consolidate weekly at this uh, 250 support level, obviously we're going to have room for a continuation lower back into the two. Um, and based on this chart, yeah, we're kind of sandwiching to the downside here. Let me check out the weekly chart. Mm. Yeah, I'm seeing. Uh, I'm seeing natural gas more of a, a more of a um, core trade than a swing trade at this point. Uh, very choppy weekly chart um, sitting here on uh, on the 200 moving average, but I still think it still has a lot of room uh, for lower into the 270s. I'm going to set an alert at 270. Uh, because I'm going to be watching a reaction off the 270. Perhaps we may have an early buy into the 270s due to the fact that we do have some support here. So we're going to see how that is going to play out. All right. So this is all for now. Thanks so much for tuning in and uh, hope you all have a great, fantastic, profitable trading week ahead. And remember, if you have any questions, you can feel free to email us at info at traderlaw.com. If you have any charts that you would like reviewed, email us and we will accommodate it in our next weekly uh, game plan. Uh, also, we have launched a brand new program is the Trade Out Loud Auto Trading Program. If you would like to find out more information about that program, and this is a program that is designed for traders that do not have the time to trade, uh, feel free to uh, visit our website. It is tradeoutloud.com for a slash auto trading to find out more about that. Also, we will have a price increase at the end of next week. Our trading room is going to increase its price from $199 a month to $299 a month. If you would like to, if you would like to lock in the rate, now's the time. Uh, you would be grandfather in for the life of the subscription at $199 per month. All right, and we also have an upcoming class that is uh, starting on September uh, September 17th. So it is a week from tomorrow. 
and uh, it is the power income futures day trading class if you like more information about that feel free to email us at info at tradeoutloud.com we still have a promo that is going on and it's going to expire on monday at midnight thanks so much everyone and i'll see you in the trading room and uh have a very profitable trading week ahead